points in Spain, Real Madrid. Yes, Real Madrid were held by Celta Figo as they moved the points above Barcelona at the top of La Liga. Two order it ended. Yes, add Santiago Bernabeu. In some other results, Atletico Bilbao lost at home to Osasuna by a long goal. Valencia Atletico Madrid shared his point. Two other right and dead. Villarreal, yes, defeated Levante by two goals to one. Granada also defeated Real Valladolid by two goals to one. Barcelona defeated Getafe by two goals to one. Also, Sevilla and Espanyol, they shared his points. Two other right and dead. Maloca defeated Deportivo Alaves by a long goal. While Leganes and Real Batiz, they shared his points. Goalless draw. Yes, talking of the way they sit on the table after 24 round of games. Real Madrid lead the way with 53 points. Barcelona second with 52 points. Getafe third, 42 points. Atletico Madrid fourth with 40 points. And Sevilla fifth with 40 points. Yes, now in England, Liverpool defeated Norwich City by a long goal to go 25 points clear at the summit of the table. In other results, Wolves and Leicester City, they shared his points. Goalers draw. Southampton lost the to Burnley by two goals to one. Norwich City also lost the to Liverpool by a long goal. Aston Villa, yes, they lost the to Tottenham by three goals to two. But Arsenal humiliated Newcastle United by four goals to nil. Yes, talking of the table now, after 26 a round of games, Liverpool sit on top with 76 points. Manchester City second with 51 points. Leicester City third with 50 points. Chelsea fourth with 41 points. And Tottenham fifth with 40 points. Yes, uh, there is a game to go down in England tonight. It will be Chelsea against Manchester United at exactly 9 p.m. While in the city here, yes, AC Milan will be welcoming Torino to the San Siro at exactly 8.45 p.m. All right, to some other football stories, Aston Villa manager De Smith says a fatical, yes, a fatical VAR decision contributed to Tottenham's last game Premier League win at Villa Park yesterday. The sports were awarded a penalty by VAR where the score was 1-1 with Son Eumin scoring the rebound. The fourth Korean forward later, yes, the South Korean forward later scored his top time winner, taking Jose Mourinho's side to fifth in the table. Smith, however, was heavily critical of VAR's intervention. He said, and I quote, I don't get it. All right, Tottenham boss Jose Mourinho says Manchester City deserve the benefit of doubt over their two-season ban from European club competition until their appeal is heard. Mourinho said, and I quote, at the end of the process, we will see if they are punished or not. You have punished them, but they have the chance to appeal until the appeal finishes. I think Manchester City has the benefit of doubt. End of quote. Yes, it will be recalled that Manchester City were banned from UEFA competitions for two seasons and were also fined 30 million euros on Friday for serious breaches of UEFA's financial regulations. Manchester United manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer says Pogba faces a challenge just to get fit again. Pogba's season has been wrecked by two anchors injuries that have restricted him to eight games for United. So he just said and I quote, Paul knows he has to work out to get back to his best. He has been out now for so long. It is a challenge to get back into shape. Liverpool manager Jurgen club says he feels so. He feels for Pep Guardiola and the Manchester City players after the club suspension from Europe. Jurgen Klopp said and I quote, it was a shock when I heard it in this moment. I imagine it's very hard for them. To be honest, I feel for Pep and the players. Meanwhile, Jurgen Klopp has said Liverpool's unstoppable charge towards their first top life title in 30 years is outstanding. Quickly to the Emirates Stadium this morning, Arsenal manager Mikel Ateta says he is pleased with his size reaction following their winter break after the beat Newcastle Fogos to nil at the Emirates Stadium. Tottenham manager Jose Mourinho has said his side deserved to win, but Aston Villa did not deserve to lose after Spurs 3 2 win at Villa Park yesterday. All right, report coming from Portugal. As in a portal for Moussam Rega, yes, I said he was subjected to racist abuse from fans after he walked off midway through his side win at Victoria Guimarães. Marega started to walk towards the dugout in the 69 minutes, nine minutes after scoring what would prove to be the winner in Porto's 2 1 victory. Yes, teammates and opposition players tried to persuade him to stay on, but he was eventually substituted. 
All right, to some tennis story this morning. Yes, yeah, talking from the New York Open. British number three, Cat Edmond, won his first ATP event since October 2013 by beating Andrew Seppi 7-5-6-1 in the final of the New York Open. Edmond converted his one break point in the first set to take the opener against the 35-year-old Italian. The 25-year-old took a 3-0 lead in the second set before going on to win it and, of course, the match. Yes, very quickly, I come back home this morning to talk uh, local stories. Ex Super Eagle striker Odion Igalo, yes, trained with his Manchester United teammate for the first time yesterday after he was away from the team due to precautionary measures over coronavirus. Igalo has been training with Manchester based performance coach Wayne Richardson at the GB Taekwondo Center in Manchester. But he arrived at Carrington yesterday morning to train with his new teammate for the very first time. All right, talking about the MPFL. Yes, of course, games were played yesterday in the Nigeria Professional Football League. But a sad one, yes, sad one coming from Abia State this morning. Yes, Ayimba chairman Felix Ayasi Agu sustained a head injury as violence rocked the Nigeria Professional Football League match between Abia Warriors and Ayimba at the Umaya Township Stadium on Sunday. The match was called off by the officials in the 24 minutes as the angry man refused to leave the pitch. It was reported that trouble started when the referee awarded a penalty to Warriors the upside in the 10th minute after Abiodun Adebayo brought down James Ode. A maker Isaac, however, missed the spot kick which sent Ayimba fans into wide jubilations. Of course, these, however, infuriated Warriors fans who got into a fight with the Ayimba supporters with both fans allegedly throwing stones at each other. And of course, effort by the chairman of both teams to appeal to their supporters yielded no result with Ayimba boss Ayasi Agu sustaining a head injury after being hit by a stone from fans. And I can report this morning that the Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Sunday Dari, has promised severe punishment for teams and fans involved in violence in the league as it will be meeting with LMC soon. Meanwhile, the league management company has ordered that the abandoned game should be concluded at the Okigwe Township Stadium behind closed doors at 10 a.m. this morning. Yes, talking of other results played, yes, the result of games played yesterday in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Enugu Rangers lost at home to Aqua United by 2 goals to 1. Atlas humiliated Adama United by 5 goals to nil. Ifeanyi Uba, yes, the defeated Social Stars of Akura by 30 goals to 1. Kano Pilas defeated MFM FC of Lagos by a long goal. Kwara United and Rivers United FC shared his points 100. It ended. Nasarawa defeated Jigawa Golista by a long goal. Plateau United also defeated Dakara FC by 2 goals to nil. Wari was de defeated Kasina United by 2 goals to nil. While Wiki Tories, the Wiki Tories humiliated Lobby Stars by Four goes to nil. It's already 12 minutes gone past eight. Right your pensioners 106.7 FM. Of course, uh, I've got uh, many stories uh, to dish out this morning. I just wish that uh, well, let me say I hope that time will pass me meet, meet me to finish this morning. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I can report that the 15,400 capacity Stevenkeshi Stadium in Asaba will host the next one 2021 Africa Cup of Nations a qualifying match between Nigeria Super Eagles and the Leo Stars of Syria Load, the Nigeria Football Federation has announced. Yes, according to General Secretary Dr. Mohamed Sanusi, he said, and I quote, We are finally settled for the Stevenkeshi Stadium Asaba for the qualifying match against Syria Load. The match will be played on Friday, 27th March, 2020. Yes, the venue, named after former Nigeria captain and coach the late Stephen Keshi, has hosted several international matches involving the Super Eagles and the Nigeria Under 23 squad since it was opened two years ago. Yes, with the Nigeria Football Federation having picked the match on the sun for the first match, the Syria Law Football Association is now most likely to opt for Tuesday, the 31st March. For the ritual less scheduled for the Siaka Stevens Stadium in Freetown. Victory next month's match day 36 shot against the Leo Stars of, will of course take the Super Eagles closer to the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations finals as they currently perch at the top of their pool with the maximum six points from their first two matches and a goal difference of plus three. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'll be saying my BYE this morning. Many thanks for you for sticking around and, of course, uh, for listening to Pensioners at 106.7 FM. Yes, uh, you can join me again tomorrow as I'll be bringing to you another fresh edition of the show, uh, Sports Spectra. Yes, many thanks to my producer, Tony Tiamiyu, and, of course, uh, the two DCAs that I met on ground. 
Yes, and the Bata Bello. I'm a very old guy, Abiola Ayodele. Till tomorrow, my name is Idris Abiola. Enjoy the rest of your day. Pensioners FM 106.7 <laughs>